Welcome, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 uh, Exponential Functions uh, Unit 4, Lesson Number 1, Integer Exponent Home Review, Part 1. And so this is our new unit, and hopefully this will be helpful to you guys who are learning about ex exponential expressions um, and functions. And so let's take a look at the first question. Write each of the following exponential expressions without the use of exponents. And we see in this case that we are... Um, in each of these things, from 2 to negative 3, 2 to negative 2, 2 to negative 1, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3rd, we're just multiplying by 2. And 2 to the 1st is equal to 2, and 2 to the 2nd is equal to 4. So we multiply 2 by 4, we're going to get 8. Now, to go backwards would mean that to divide 2 by 2, we would get 1. So 2 to the 0 is equal to 1. So the process is, when we go backwards, the other direction, we're dividing by 2. Make sure it looks like a division symbol. Okay, so we're dividing by 2. And so that's the idea. Moving forward, multiply 2. Moving backwards, we're dividing by 2. So if we're going to now 2 to negative 1, we're going to divide 1 by 2 to get 1 half. And... To get 2 to negative 2, we divide 2 to the negative 1 by 2, so we divide this by 2. And 1 half divided by 2 is 1 fourth. And to find 2 to negative 3, we divide 1 fourth by 2 to get 1 eighth. And interesting enough in this case, we see in this case that the denominator for each of these fractions is actually being multiplied by 2. So to divide by 2 is the same as to multiply by 1 half. And we also notice that 2 to negative 3 is 1 over 8, while 2 to the positive 3 is really 8 over 1. Let's take a look at the same process for part B with dealing with not 2s but base of 5. And so we're beginning with, in this case, we see that 5 to the first power is equal to 5. Multiply that by 5 to get 25. And so if we multiply 25 by 5, we get 125. <clears throat> and again, the whole idea of moving forward by raising the power of 1, we're going to multiply by 5. Now, when we go the other way, we're going to divide by 5. So 5 to the first power is 5, and 5 divided by 5 is 1. So 5 to the 0 power is equal to 1. We're going to now divide 1 by 5 to get 1 fifth. So 5 to negative 1 is 1 fifth. We divide that 1 fifth by 5. And so 1 fifth divided by 5 which is really the same as multiplying by one-fifth, is 1 over 25. And finally, 5 to negative 3 would be the same as taking 5 to negative 2 and dividing by 5. And we would get 1 over 125. And again, we see in this case that 5 to negative 3, which is 1 over 25, compared to 5 to the positive 3 is positive, one, or five to positive 3 is 125. So, the negative exponent is the same as the the same as taking one over the number of the positive exponent. All right, so really we see this this, this correspondence here that five to the negative three is equal to one over five to the positive three, which is one of those ideas we saw deal with the negative exponents in our lessons. Question number two. Now let's go the other way around. For each of the following, determine the integer value of n that satisfies the equation. The first one's done for you. Well, you know, in this case, we see that to the n, we're going to we're going to change the eight into a, a number of base two. So we see here that to the n is equal 1 over 2 to the third. I really should have typed that out. And so 1 over 2 to the third is the same as, well, 2 to the n equals 2 to the negative 3. We talked about that in the previous question, 
that one over uh, one over the base to the exponent the same as that base to the negative exponent, right? And therefore, two to the n equals two negative three n equals negative three. So we're going to use the same concept here. We want to really write these in this have, have the same exponential uh, <clears throat> have the same uh, same base in this case, so that we can compare the exponents. So we'll see here that we have four to the n. Well, 16 can be written as four to the second power. Well, that means n is equal to two. For, for c, three to the n equals one over 81. Well, we see here that 81 really is three to the fourth power which is, in this case, 3 to the n equals 3 to the negative 4, and is equal to negative 4. Now, for part d, we see 7 to the n is equal to 1. Well, here's the thing. The idea is that any number, except for 0, raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. Therefore, 1 is equal to 7 to the 0 power, and therefore n is equal to 0. Let's continue with the next questions. 5 to the n, well, <clears throat> 25 is 5 squared. And so we have 1 over 5 squared, which leads us to 5 to the n equals 5 to the negative 2, n is equal to negative 2. So again, we, we want to be able to switch out back and forth this idea of um, this idea of 1 over a number is going to be, we can write that as a as a base to negative exponent. Okay? So 10 to the n, and so 10,000 really is 10 to the fourth power because there are four zeros. So one over 10 to the fourth is really 10 to the negative four. So if 10 to the n is equal to 10 to the negative four, sorry, I gotta make it look at zero, n is equal to negative four. G looks very similar to part D, is that 13 to the n equals one, so that 13 to the n well, 13 to the 0 is equal to 1, therefore n is equal to 0. And finally for h, we see one, uh, uh, 2 to the n equals 1 over 32. And 32, we can rewrite this as 2 to the 5th power. And so 1 over 32 is going to be 2 to the negative 5th. So 2 to the n equals 2 to the negative 5th n is equal to negative 5. All right. So a lot of this is going to be uh, writing uh, numbers into a similar base. And so from there, we can kind of figure out how to, how to, uh, how to rewrite all this work here. Okay? Okay. Question number three. Use the addition property of exponents to simplify each expression. Then find a numerical answer without using your calculator. Okay, so the addition property of exponents we also discussed in class as being the product rule. When you multiply two numbers same base, we are going to keep the base and we're going to add the exponents. So for a, two to negative five times two to the third times two to the fourth, will be 2 to negative 5 plus 3 plus 4. And negative 5 plus 3 is going to be neg 2 plus 4. And then 2 to negative 2 plus 4 becomes 2 squared, and we get 4. Okay, so we simplify. So we simplify using exponents, and then find numerical the final numerical answer. And we did not need a calculator. Okay, we did not need a calculator. Hopefully, we can use a calculator to justify to double check our answers, but we don't necessarily need the calculator. Okay. So same concept for b. 
phi to the third times phi to the seventh times phi to the negative tenth. So we go, since they're all multiplying and they have the same base, we keep the base of five and raise it to the power of three plus seven minus 10. Okay, so three plus seven is 10, so we have five to the 10th power minus 10. Well, that becomes just five to the zero. And five to the zero, well, any number to zero power ex besides zero is equal to one. And so therefore we get an answer of one. And then finally, for number three, we have C to, to C, which uh, question C, which is 10 to the third times 10 to the next seventh times 10 to the second. So we have now 10 raised to the third power plus negative seven or minus seven plus two. Well, 10 to the third, three minus seven, that becomes 10 to the negative four plus two. And then negative four plus two becomes 10 to the negative two power. And so 10 to the negative two is the same as one over 10 squared. And one over 10 squared, well, 10 squared is 100, so it's one over 100. So from an exponent, exponent point of view, from a negative exponents, 10 to negative two, written as a positive exponent is gonna be one over 10 squared, which is one over 100, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of part one or a review for homework for the lesson one of our uh, exponential functions of integer and exponents. Hope this was helpful. If you found this helpful, please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure to leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. We really would love to hear any thoughts or comments or any questions you have about math. All right, we thank you for watching and we ask that you kind of look, watch out for, definitely watch out for the next video for our next questions. Thank you and be safe.